up everybody to Brave Slasher and we are back with another tier series video. In this video, we're checking out horror games. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Um, I am tearing up these horror games. As you can see, we've got at the top it's terrifying and then great and then good and then okay, bad, laughable, haven't played, not interested, and haven't played and interested. Um, there are going to be a lot of these I have not played. Um, I've played a lot of horror games, but a lot of these I haven't played. Some of them I own and plan to play. Some of them I don't own and don't care. That's just how it goes. Um, although even the ones I don't own and don't care, if they were given to me, I'd probably play them. Or if they're free, I might check them out just for the sake of having more horror on my channel. It's just how things go, y'all. I'm sorry. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Because as you can see, there's a shit ton of games to go through. We're going to start off with Emily Wants to Play. So Emily Wants to Play is one of those games I've watched people play, but I've never experienced. It's something I would be interested in playing. Basically, you're going around this house, and Emily has these dolls that each night they're trying to kill you, or each hour, or however they have it set up. I don't remember. But each doll has its own specific way you got to get from them, get, get away from them, like one of them. You have to stop moving completely. One of them, you have to turn around and not look at them. One of them, you have to keep running. Sometimes they, like, and then as you get further on in the game, you start having those nights or those hours or whatever it's divided into. You start having where multiple dolls are attacking you at once. And sometimes you do run into situations that are a little kind of fucked up where it's like, you'll get the doll that you have to run from, but you'll still get the doll that you have to stand still from. So how the fuck are you supposed to do that? And I think that's kind of the deterring factor as far as why I haven't played it, just because once you get to that point, it's just kind of like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? But I'm going to put that under haven't played, but interested. Again, it's something I would be willing to check out if the time's right. Um, next up is Killing Floor. Killing Floor is just one of those games I've never been interested in. Um, I, if I remember correctly, one or two of them you can play in VR, but at the same time, it's like a, it almost seems like a bullet hell kind of game to me. I don't know. It's just something that I haven't been too into. I'm going to go ahead and throw that under have not played, not interested. Just because, like I said, it's just not something that has piqued my interest. Next up is Fatal Frame, which is one of my favorite games of all time. It's definitely my favorite horror game of all time, even though I have not beaten it. I even started streaming it and got to a point where it, it sucks because it, it's so hard for my Xbox 360 to read the disc for whatever reason. And... I wish they would re-release this game. I really do. From what I hear, if the PS5 is actually going to be backwards compatible with all the old games, I would be able to re-get this game and play it and actually complete it. And it's something I would actually look forward to. I'm not going to put it under terrifying because to me it doesn't scare me. There, It definitely has some tense moments depending on which ghost is attacking you. But I'm definitely going to put it under great. Fatal Frame is one of those games, if you guys have the opportunity, especially when the PS5 comes out, check it out. It's basically Resident Evil, but with ghosts. And let me tell you now, Resident Evil is one of those game series. I could predict what's coming around every single corner, and there are it, 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 I don't get jump scared from Resident Evil. But Fatal Frame, when you're dealing with ghosts, they could come up out of fucking nowhere. And that's what's truly frightening about it. And they do, too. There are RNG ghost sequences where ghosts will just randomly pop up, depending on where you're at in the game. Really nice. Dead Rising 2 is probably my favorite in the series. It is the first one that I played that I actually beat. Um, I actually jumped online and beat it with a friend. And it's one of those things where it, it's just your typical Dead Rising game where you go through a mall or you go through an area and you're crafting weapons and taking out weapons and the story's pushing along and it's just a very well done game. I am actually going to put Dead Rising 2 under... Ooh, I want to put it under great, but I want to put it under good. I think I'm going to keep it under good just because I don't think it's Fatal Frame caliber of game, but is definitely worth a playthrough. Next up is the very first Dead Rising. I played the first Dead Rising when it came out, and I didn't like it. And actually, it was I didn't even play Dead Rising 2 until I made it free for Xbox Gold users. I have... <clears throat> my problem with Dead Rising 1 is it is very... 
it has a system where okay, so it's like an RPG, and they're all like this, where it's an, where it's like an RPG, and you have so much time to progress through the story, and I mean in real life time, and there comes a point in time where if you don't get far enough into the story, the game completely becomes unbeatable, and you have to start completely over. But when you start completely over, you keep the stats that you built up, so you're building your stats back back up again, and you're progressing a little bit further and a little bit further. And you're like playing through over and over and over, getting a little further each time, a little further each time. And I, I don't like that. I know a lot of people did, but like, it's like replayability just for replayability's sake in a way for me that just wasn't fun. So I'm actually going to put Dead Rising 1 as bad just because I didn't like the way things were set up. Next up is Fatal Frame 2. I can immediately tell you guys I haven't played it, but I am definitely interested. If I can ever get to the point where I'm actually able to beat Fatal Frame 1 in a way that doesn't like... Like, literally, it takes me almost 45 minutes to an hour and a half to get Fatal Frame to actually fucking work on my Xbox. But I would love to play Fatal Frame 2. Um, everybody says it's actually better than the first, which is hard for me to believe because Fatal Frame 1 is my favorite horror game of all time. And... What can I say? It's I, I, I want to play it. Next up is PT. Oh, PT. For those of you that don't know what PT is, PT stands for Playable Teaser or Playable Trailer. I, most people consider it Playable Teaser. I've heard it called both. And what it was was it was a teaser. It was a teaser demo that was released at E3 several years ago when the PS4 around the time it first came out. And you play through, and it's like this photorealistic hallway. Like, you wake up in this room, you walk out the door, you're in this hallway, and you circle the hallway. And you hear this radio talking about um, this guy that murdered his whole family. And you go through the other door at the end of the hallway. And each time you go, like, once you go through that door, it puts you back at the beginning of the hallway where you started. And each time you cycle through different things are happening and it gets crazier and crazier and i'm going to tell you now pt is the only game i've ever played that when i finished it not only was i excited because it was announcing the new silent hills which inevitably got canceled fuck you konami but it is the only time i have ever played a game and couldn't sleep for four to six hours after i played it because of how much it fucking scared me like, it legit had me shaking. It freaked me out that fucking bad. And what sucks is it is a fucking shame that you are unable to re-download the actual teaser at all anymore. And people have tried to remake it and put it out on itch.io. And somebody actually successfully fully remade it, put it out on itch.io. But then it got pulled because Konami is Konami. I, understandably, I get it, but man, it's just a fucking shame that like no one's ever going to be able to play this game again unless you've already got a PS4, but it is probably going to be the only game in this entire list I'm going to put up in terrifying, in that terrifying category, because like I said, it left me physically shaking for almost an hour and then still freaked out for another three to four hours after I was done playing it. It was that fucking scary to me. If you guys ever get a chance to fucking check it out, check it out. And whatever you do, don't look behind you. All right, next up is Resident Evil 6. I'm going to put Resident Evil 6 under laughable. The reason being... I did not like Resident Evil 5 and 6. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to rank Resident Evil 4 lower because of 5 and 6. I'll get to that a little bit later. That's going to piss a lot of y'all off. Be ready for that. But Resident Evil 6 is, if I remember correctly, the story after Wesker. And where they're going with the series. And the story was just not good. I did not like the story. The only thing I liked about the game was it was co-op and I could play with my buddy and we played it and I mean we had a good time playing it but we just had a good time because we were playing together. Neither one of us were into the story and in my opinion it's just a bad game. 
Now, I know it's got its fans, and a lot of people love it. And I like I know my friends Joy and them enjoyed playing through it. And like I said, I, like I I enjoyed playing it with my friends, but it just wasn't a game I could get into. Um, it was very action based and took all the horror out of it. And it's, it's just not my cup of tea. Y'all are still gonna hate me. Next up is Dead Space. I know a lot of y'all love the Dead Space series. I don't. First off, a part of it is I just I don't like sci-fi horror. It's let me rephrase that. Science fiction horror in itself is not bad. I don't like space sci-fi horror, like where it has to be out in space. Now trust me, there could be some science fiction y type shit happen on Earth. And you throw horror element into that, it, it wouldn't be that bad. I, I just... And here's my problem with it. First off, it plays very heavily on not having the ammo needed to complete what it is you need to complete. Which is kind of annoying, but I get it. It's to add the tension. But my buddy was like, dude, it's one of the scariest games I ever played. You should come over and play it. I played it for about four hours. And I go... It's like, literally, you walk into a room or you walk down a hall... Nothing's happening, and then all of a sudden, something drops down at a vent behind you. And it's supposed to give you a jump scare, but I never got jump scared. The only time, the only thing I ever did when I heard the fucking clank of the grate hit the ground when something was falling out was, fuck, I gotta fight this thing now. So they turn around and fight it, kill it, move on. And it just, uh, guys, I'm sorry. You guys are gonna fucking hate me for this, but I'm gonna put it at bad. Y'all are going to be so mad about that. Don't get me wrong. That's the worst rating you're going to see from a Dead Space game. Okay? It's just in bad. It's definitely not laughable. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. Next up is Resident Evil 2. Now, the picture they're showing for Resident Evil 2 is the Resident Evil 2 remake. I've never played the remake. If I go through this list, I don't think the original Resident Evil 2 is on this list. No, Resident Evil 2 is not on this list. So I'm going to count this as the original Resident Evil 2 that I actually still own on N64, believe it or not. Um, no, we'll count it for what it is. It's the remake. It's the picture of the remake. We're going to keep it as the remake. I have not played it, but I am definitely interested. It looks amazing. Everyone that's played it that I've talked to says they absolutely enjoy it. I can't wait to get my hands on this game. I'm just too broke to afford it. That's really what it boils down to. Next up is Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7, for me, is going into good. No, we're going to put it in great. There's a reason I'm going to put it in great. I have not finished Resident Evil 7. The reason I didn't finish it is because I decided I was going to start streaming, and I wanted to play it on stream, and I never ended up getting around to playing it because I was playing so many other different things. I still own the game on the Xbox One, but when I was playing through it, it had one of the most fucked up jump scares I'd ever gotten in my life and I'm walking down this fucking hallway there's no music cues no nothing but the fucking dad busts through the fucking wall with his fucking chainsaw scared the fucking shit out of me I screamed dropped my controller he ended up killing me because I was too busy recovering from the fucking jump scare and I ended up turning it off at that point because it set me back kind of far and I was like well fuck and I just never got back to playing it from that point. Still an amazing game. I like the story with it, like the, the introduction with the first lady when you find it, like, because you're looking for your girlfriend or your wife. I don't remember if she's your girlfriend or your wife. But you find her, but she's all fucked up. And dude, it is just a fucked up game. But yeah, it's going to go under great. And that's just where I have it placed. Next up, I believe this is supposed to be... The Fatal Frame on the Wii U, I've never played it, but definitely, as always, haven't played, but interested, just because it's Fatal Frame. Um, next up, and we're going to kind of do these back-to-back, -back just because of how I feel about the series. Slender, Slender Man doesn't interest me. I've watched people play it. It doesn't look scary to me. At, the idea of Slender is boring. I've watched a movie or two based on Slender. <sighs> He's just boring to me. So both these Slender games are going to go up into haven't played, not interested, just because, like I said, it's just something I don't care about. Now, if I end up getting to a point where I'm kind of at a hole in a wall, or like at a rut, where I, I don't have an opportunity to play anything else, um, 
I might check him out at that point. But for now, I, I'm just not interested. Next up is Dead Island. Dead Island is a game I played once with a group of friends. We made it kind of far, and then this one guy showed me this glitch and glitched me a shit ton of fucking swords, which kind of made the game boring. I never got around to finishing it, because like I said, I only played it once with all my friends. Um, it was a good game. Don't get me wrong. I had fun with it, but after the glitch, I lost interest because it made everything too easy. Um, but it is definitely something I would love to eventually get back to again. We're going to put it under okay. Um, there are things about it that could have been better, things about it that could have been worse. Um, but yeah, it's just, it, it's an okay game. You're basically trapped on an island with a bunch of fucking zombies. Next up is Amnesia. I'm going to rank the entire, no, I'm not going to do it unfairly like that. I only played the very first Amnesia. I have all three of them on the PlayStation because they gave them away for free for gold or free for PlayStation Plus members. I played it and just did not enjoy it because it is a type of horror that just kind of throws you in the middle of nowhere and just expects you to explore around and figure shit out as you go and then you start getting chased by monsters that you have to hide from you can't take you can't fight them which is is just the type of horror game i'm not into i guess it's it, I, I don't like constantly running with one exception we'll get to that later because it is on this list um but amnesia i'm gonna put under bad just because, like I said, I, I just had a really hard time playing this. And with that being said, we're also going to go ahead and throw the other Amnesia games under Haven't Played But Not Interested. Alright, next up we got Manhunt. I never played Manhunt 2. I would be interested in playing it, so we're going to go ahead and throw Manhunt 2 under Haven't Played But Interested. Um, I have, however, played Manhunt 1, and I'm going to put that under OK. So what Manhunt was all about was you're kind of kidnapped by this group of people and they it was made by Rockstar and they were watching you. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't even really consider this horror. I can see where the horror comes from it. But you were basically trying to escape this room, but you were like being video recorded for a live web broadcast or whatever. And it was just basically the game became popular because of the insanely brutal kills that came along with the game. And that's really what it was all about that's why it's under okay i thought the story was lackluster i mean the graphics were pretty good for its time but it was just okay but i would definitely be interested in checking out manhunt too because like i said i just i never played it next up resident evil the original resident evil and i gotta put that at great gotta put it at great this is actually the remake of the original resident evil what can I say? It was it was the game that sparked my interest in the horror genre. Mine personally. I know it wasn't like the first ever horror game, but it was the first one I played. And the re and it's the reason why I no longer got jump scared in any of the Resident Evils after it. And that's because when I first played, once you get to the opening cutscene, you get to the mansion, you get done talking to Barry, Barry walks off. I was like, well, why do I want to stay in this mansion? How about I just fucking leave? So I turned around, went to go leave, walked out the went to go walk out the door, and what happened? I had some fucking zombie dogs try to jump to the door and bite my fucking face off. Scared the shit out of me. From that moment on, I expected everything around every corner and never got jump scared again until Resident Evil 7. I know that is a horrible way to go about a game like that, but that's just what happened to me. It's still an amazing game. I actually never beat the first one. I got to the very end fight with um, Tyrant up on the rooftop and actually found out that I am terrible with resource management. Um, I literally could only get hit once, or I, I couldn't get hit once, I'm sorry. If I got hit, I was going to die. I had no healing items going into the fight. I literally had to dodge Tyrant until the rocket launcher was dropped, and once the rocket launcher was dropped, I somehow managed to fucking miss it after about 45 minutes to an hour and a half of trying to get this damn rocket launcher to drop, and I fucking missed. Like, I thought it was like an automatic point and shoot, and it went into a cutscene. Apparently, I was so far fucking off, it didn't count. And you only get one bullet in the fucking rocket launcher anyways. I was so pissed. Still an amazing game, though. Fucking love it. Next up is the System Shock games, I'm guessing. Um, I never played System Shock. I don't even know what it's about. Um, I'm going to put it under have not played, not interested. Even though I'm sure some people will be like, oh, dude, you should check out that game. It's like this, 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 and this. It's, I, I just don't know enough about it to really know what's going on with it. 
Next up is Walking Dead's Survival Instinct. Haven't played, not interested. I was definitely interested when the game was first announced. I was excited to play with Norman Reedus from The Walking Dead and play through his story. Um, read reviews, read the things about the game, and it, it, it just turned out to be shit. Shit I'm not into. Um, apparently the menu system was kind of clunky, and the way things worked just weren't all that great. So, haven't played, not interested. It's a bummer. Now, remember when I told you there was going to be a game I was going to talk to you guys about that because I don't like the games where you're basically always running and hiding from things, but I, I made an exception or two. Outlast is that exception. I actually really enjoyed Outlast, even though I thought the ending was kind of weak. Um, I'm going to put Outlast under good. I think it could have been better with a better ending. Um, it wasn't terrible. It was, well, obviously it wasn't terrible. I have it under good. Um... But I really enjoyed the game. Most of the game was actually really creepy. I could have definitely done without all the fucking naked men standing around. Um, but there was, like, one scene, especially in the um, Whistleblower DLC, where, like, you're laying on this... Like, you're trapped in this fucking coffin, and you're watching the dude get basically cut all the way down the middle from his fucking penis to his head. And it was just fucking... And then it almost happens to you. And it was cringeworthy. And, oh, man, it was so good. They did really well. I'm still interested in playing Outlast 2. As a matter of fact, is Outlast 2 on this list so I can go ahead and throw it in a fucking place? Because I haven't played Outlast 2 yet. I don't think it's on this list. If it is, we'll get to it. Next up is Silent Hills Origins. Never played it, but I'm interested. I'm interested in playing the entire Silent Hill series, regardless of how bad it is. A lot of them I have not played. But that is definitely something I would be interested in playing. Next up is Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 is another one I played probably for about four hours, and I will give it this. I actually thought it was a little bit more nerve-wracking than Dead Space 1. So I'm going to put Dead Space 2 under OK. Again, a lot of you guys would be like, man, that should be under good, or at least, you know, good or great. Again, it's sci-fi horror in space, just not my thing. Um, as a matter of fact, I think Dead Space 3 didn't even make this listing of games. And oh, it did. It's here. Okay. But yeah, it's Dead Space 2 was, I mean, it was, it was okay. Next up is The Thing. Never played it. Not interested. Um, I don't really know too much about it. I'm sure a lot of people would be like, man, that's such a good game. You should check it out. Um, I, I mean, if y'all want to buy it for me, I'll play it. If you guys think it's that good. Just saying. Resident Evil 3 Nemesis is actually one of my least favorite Resident Evils, aside from 5 and 6. Um, I don't think it's a bad game, by all means. I'm going to put Resident Evil 3 Nemesis under OK. My only complaint with the game is the jumping around in timelines. Um, I, I could have done without that. Um, there's one other Resident Evil that does that that I actually still enjoyed. It's actually my favorite Resident Evil in the series. I know, it makes no sense the way I just explained that. But I also thought Nemesis was kind of lackluster it's like there's only so many tyrants you can go through before you're like all right i'm done you're all the same next up is the evil within the evil within i'm going to put under good i never beat it i bought it the day it came out played the shit out of it and then got stuck because i got to a point where you had to shoot down these bodies in an alley where there was high waters and a water monster that could kill you and i didn't have enough ammo from the last firefight to shoot down all the bodies that I needed to get through. So without playing through the last firefight and trying to conserve more ammo, it was absolutely impossible for me to get past this part. I didn't want to replay the chapter that I was on or the section of the level that I was on from the very beginning. So I quit playing it. I eventually traded it in for something else. Um, good game. I just, again, resource management is not my thing. I am terrible at it. Um, also has one um, hell of a fucking callback to the original, re original Resident Evil when a zombie's eating the body and he fucking looks back at you. And I'm telling you, an amazing callback, almost spot on with it. I loved it. Um, Dying Light is one of those games I haven't played, but I'm interested. Um, I just never had the money to get it. It's basically done by the same people that do, uh, what was it, um, Dead Island? And it's basically Dead Island, but first person in free room. And something I would definitely enjoy playing. Next up is Telltale's Walking Dead. I'm going to put this under great. The very first walk season of The Walking Dead 
is still my favorite. The ending had me in tears. Just the killing of the main character and Clementine becoming the main character from it and her carrying on the rest of the series. It was just a good time, man. Like, and I didn't, there's, the only thing I didn't like is there's a part where you have to shoot zombies that are coming through a fence and you couldn't invert your controls. And I play with inverted controls. I was playing on PlayStation and it took me several tries to do that, but I got it. Uh, just very good storytelling. It was when Telltale was at its best. 100%. Next up is Darkness. I'm going to put Darkness under good, and a lot of you will wonder why I have that there, but some of the other games below it that I do. I really enjoyed the Darkness, and in the Darkness, you're playing as this character that's been overtaken by demons, and you got both their heads kind of hanging over you, and you get special powers using those heads. And... What sealed it for me was there was this part where you are, you basically watch your girlfriend get murdered in front of you and you can't get to her to save her. And the rest of the game becomes revenge. And you're also spending a lot of time calling phone numbers, trying to figure out what the hell is going on from pay phones and things like that. It is just an insane game. I definitely advise if you get an opportunity, go check it out. Um, just an amazing game. Resident Evil Revelations. Um, never played it. Not really interested. Well, no, I'm interested. Because Resident Evil Revelations games, um, I hear, are pretty decent. Um, Agony. Laughable. Heard about this game at an E3 a couple of years ago. Was super stoked when they fucking announced it. They showed scenes from it. It looked vicious. It looked gory. It looked like something I was going to love making. Well, I, I wasn't planning on making videos at the time. I was like, man, I really want to play that game. It looks amazing. And then I started streaming. And then the game sneakily comes out. I forgot about it completely because they stopped talking about it. And all of a sudden, I seen on the PlayStation Store that Agony was brand new the day that I was looking. I was like, man, that the name of that game looks familiar. And I started looking up. I was like, wait, this is that game that I was like so looking forward to from E3. And then I played it. One, I definitely couldn't do any videos on it or stream it. It is so full of so much nudity. Even the fucking peaches that you have to eat to gain health has a pussy in it. Like, just a game you cannot put on YouTube, or if you do, I mean, you're definitely going to get demonetized. You have to put it at 18 up for it to be able to be viewed. And the story was just so weak. I hear they fixed it and they changed it, so I'm interested in going back and maybe checking it out since I do still own the game because I bought it digitally. Just at the time... It was not my thing. Next up, this is Five Nights at Freddy's. I don't know which one this is, um, but I'm just going to use it as the franchise holder. Um, it goes in between haven't played but interested and haven't played but not interested. I'm going to put it under not interested, just to even things out here. Um, I've never played a Five Nights at Freddy's game. My kids are obsessed with them, my son anyways. Or at least he was obsessed with them. It's just, I don't know... The thing that turned me off to is like you're just clicking through cameras, clicking through cameras until something pops out and scares you unless you don't, and then you survive to the next night. And it just wasn't something that I was just like super like, oh my goodness, I need to check out this Five Nights at Freddy's. I was like, it's fun watching other people get scared, but it doesn't really scare me when I'm watching them get scared. Um, I, just not something I was looking forward to. So Fear 3, haven't played, interested. That's all we're going to say about that for now. House of the Dead. The only one I've played is House of the Dead 2 on Dreamcast. And I'm going to put it under good. It was an on-rail shooter where... I mean, it was just an on-rail shooter, and the Dreamcast had, like, the controllers, guns that you could use to point at the screen and shoot around, and me and a friend would play it. Like, one of us would use the gun, the other one would use a controller. And it was just a good time. It wasn't great, but it was just pure fun. That's what it was. Friday the 13th, I'm going to put under okay, just because it kind of took the formula of Dead by Daylight and in one way made it cooler, just from the sense of you were able to get environmental kills, which was really cool, but like due to the lawsuits and stuff like that that happened because of the game, they weren't able to further support it in the way that they wanted to, um, there were a lot of things that they weren't able to fix that really needed to be fixed, the game is still broken, you're still really, you're either extremely overpowered as a killer or ridiculous, like, I, I guess this would be said for Day by Daylight 2, 
But like as the killer, it is so easy to get kills in this game because of the whole being able to instantly teleport and things like that. But at the same time, like there is like one or two window glitches you can get into where you can literally Jason can run inside the house, run outside the house, run inside the house, and you just keep jumping through the window. And like it, it's like a specific house that you can do that in. And they just needed to be a way to patch that out and maybe, like, make it to where the window can't be gone back through or something. I don't fucking know. But overall, the game was clunky, wasn't as good. It definitely was cool to have different objectives other than just fixing generators. I'll give it that. But that's actually what saves it and makes it okay. Otherwise, I would put it under bad. Next up, Fear 2. Again, we're just going to put that under haven't played yet, interested. There will be a reason for that. If you watch my channel, you already know. Next up, Resident Evil 5, for the exact same reasons, it's going where Resident Evil 6 is. Laughable. Actually, we'll make it a little better. It'll just go under bad. So the reason why Resident Evil 5 is going under bad for me, my issue with Resident Evil 5 is, again, it's fun because of the co-op, but it's bad because of the story. The whole ending fight with Wesker I thought was done terribly. Chris punching a rock was stupid. And it wasn't even a rock, it was a goddamn boulder. It, it's, I don't know, I just, I don't like action Resident Evil. I want survival horror, and it didn't feel like survival horror, it just felt like pure action. And it was continuing the stupid story plot of, like, they're no longer zombies, they're, like, just deformed humans or insane, like, virus, vi virus humans or whatever. Like, I want my zombies back in Resident Evil. That's what I want in Resident Evil, is zombies over and above all next up lone survivor never even heard of so we're gonna put that under haven't played not interested fear effect 2 i haven't played but am interested um only because i played fear effect 1 more on that later dead by daylight i'm going to put under great it would be under good but the one thing dead by daylight does is they continue to support the game they continue to put out new killers. They continue to put out new survivors. They just recently put out Ghostface. Ash from Evil Dead is in it. It's got Freddy. It's got Michael. It's got Leatherface as killers. Like, it's got all these horror movie villains, and they're also pulling characters from the movies for survivors, like um, Quentin's in it from the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Um, very sad-looking ver version of Laurie Strode from Halloween. And it's, but they've done such a good job with getting all these characters in this game. They're going to continue to add more, especially while people are still playing it. There are some balancing issues, but there's always going to be with games like this. My only problem is it's like they cater to survivors, survivors bitch and bitch and bitch about how hard it is to do this, how hard it is to do that. And then they start to make it easier on survivors. And then the people that main killers start to bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch about how easy it is for the survivors to get away and how easy it is for them to do this. So they start changing things back this way. And it's, it's a constant tug of war between survivor mains and killer mains bitching that the other one has the advantage. And that is the biggest downfall to the game. It doesn't take away from it. It's still a great time to play with friends. I still get together with my friends on occasion um, only because I've got so much other stuff that I do play. But I still get together with them on occasion to play on PlayStation. An amazing game. One of my favorite games. Love that game. Alan Wake also goes under great. I plan on making a video series on this. Alan Wake is one of Remedy's first ever games. Actually, I think it's their first game. And it is basically like Twin Peaks video game style. If you've never seen Twin Peaks, then you won't know what I'm talking about. But it's very suspenseful, very figure out as you go. Things happen. Just absolutely insane. Silent Hill, never played it, but would be interested. So we're going to put that under interested. Um, System Shock, haven't played, but not really interested. I hear it's good, but it's kind of older and something I really wouldn't get into too much. Resident Evil Revelation 2, haven't played, but interested. Um, Dead Space 3. Now, this is going to be something you guys are also going to disagree with me on. Dead Space 3, in my opinion, goes under good. Depraved. Why do you place it above Dead Space 2 and Dead Space 1? Because... I got to play with a friend, and the one dynamic they did, there's this whole segment in the game where one person is seeing what's really going on, and another person is having visions of things that's going on. 
And when me and my buddy Joe experienced that at the exact same time where I was playing as just the regular person because I was lead, I was playing the lead character and then he was playing the dude with the visions. He was like, dude, do you see all these balloons and cake and shit? And I'm like, dude, I don't see a fucking thing. I just see walls. Like, the place I'm like, like dude, our minds were blown that they did something like that. Fucking outstanding. Um, that was the best quality of that game. And don't get me wrong, I still think the story, I mean, the story was pretty decent in it, um, which I'm sure the story was amazing in 2 and 1, but I just didn't get far enough into those to care. Um, but no, I just, I really enjoyed Dead Space 3 a little bit more than Dead Space 2 and 1. Next up, Zombie U. Haven't played, but interested. I do own it, except it's not Zombie U. I just own the regular zombie. Um, I probably wouldn't play it for too long, because basically it's like, you play, you eventually die, and when you die, you drop all your stuff, you start from the very beginning, and you have to make your way back to your body through all the shit that you've already been through, and you can pick up the stuff that you had. But your old self becomes a zombie, which I thought was kind of cool. But I do have it, so eventually I'll play it. Fatal Frame 3, haven't played it. Interested. The very first Saw game, I'm going to put under OK. I played it. I beat it within the first day or two that I had it. Um, I love the Saw series as a movie franchise, but I... I the game was just okay. They pulled a lot from the movie that worked, did a lot of things that didn't really work, wasn't terrible, wasn't great. Again, it was just okay. Next up is Silent Hill 4 The Room. Silent Hill 4 The Room is one of the few Silent Hill games I did play. I never beat it, but I'm definitely going to put it under good. Um, I don't know how that ranks amongst a lot, a lot of horror games for a lot of you guys, but I just, from what I played of it, I actually really enjoyed it. I, I, I don't know. What can I say? I enjoyed it. Next up, Last of Us. This is going under great. Understand, terrifying is strictly for games that terrified the shit out of me. Nothing else is going to go in that category. None of these other games scared me. But this game, Last of Us, is actually probably the best game on this entire list to me. I love the game. The story is amazing. The gameplay is amazing. There's a second one coming out very soon. I can't fucking wait. What can I say? Next up, Umbrella Corpse. This is the one Resident Evil game I haven't played, but I'm not interested in playing. I just don't care. It looks stupid. No interest. Layers of Fear is going to go under great. Pure psychological horror. Right? You're not really running from anything. You're going through rooms and trying to find things and crazy shit happens. Jump scares galore. I cannot praise this game enough. I'm a little disappointed Layers of Fear 2 is not on here because it would definitely go and have not played. But interested if any of you guys want to donate that, I would love it. But you don't have to. I'll eventually get it regardless. But Layers of Fear 1, mwah, fucking outstanding. Need more of it. Next up is Resident Evil Raccoon Operation Raccoon City, just another game I don't care about. Haven't played, not interested. Um, just one of those side things that they put out that it, it just it just doesn't interest me. Next up, Deadly Premonition. I'm gonna put an okay. The story is out fucking standing. That's it. The rest of the game is garbage. If you can stick through it. For the story, play this fucking game. But the controlling is horrible. There's a, like if you get stuck outside at night, you're fucked, and your car has gas, which is worse. So you got to maintain a gas gauge. I don't like when they do that in games. I understand it. It's it's to add intensity to it. But I'm telling you guys, if you can get through the story, it is fucking worth it. It's one of the better stories I've played in a horror game, hands down. It's just the gameplay is so bad, that's what makes it just okay for me. The gameplay is that bad. Check it out. Next up is Silent Hill 2. What can I say? It's got to go under great. It didn't scare me again. Um, but guys, I'm not even going to talk about the game. If, if, if you're a horror fan and you've never played Silent Hill 2, are you really a horror fan? Or if you're a horror game fan and you've never played Silent, 2, Silent Hill 2, are you really a horror game fan? I'm just saying. Next up, I, I believe that game is called Hellblade. Um, never played it, but definitely interested. I don't know much about it, but it looked good. Condemned Criminal Origin. 
laughable. I bought it because I heard the Condemned series as a whole was good. This game came out. I bought it brand new and was heavily disappointed. That's all I can say. Dead Space Extraction? Never played it. Not really interested. I didn't know that was a game. I thought it was a movie. I have no mouth and I have to scream. I'm interested. Just because I've read a little bit up on it. Never played it. Um, definitely something I would probably get into. Again, another Five Nights at Freddy's. Got to go under have not played. Not interested. The first Silent Hill. I've never played the first Silent Hill. I know a lot of you guys could probably say the same thing I said about Silent Hill 2 for this. And obviously I, I don't mean that. Um, and that's not me backtracking. There's a lot of these games I probably should have played being a horror fan that I haven't. But I'm definitely interested in playing it. Evil Within 2. I teeter-totter between not interested and interested depending on the week. We're just going to put it under not interested for now. Understand just because there's not an in-between for me to put it in. Um, that's the only reason it's going there. Darkness 2. Haven't played but interested for sure. I love the Darkness game. Saw 2. Haven't played but not interested. Just because Saw 1 wasn't impressive enough for me to care for Saw 2. Now. Resident Evil 4. I am putting it under just good. Why is it under just good? The game itself is great. Right? Did a very good job of mixing action with the horror. Still had the puzzle elements. Had you at the edge of your seat. But here's my problem. First off, it was down it, it was the game that sent us down the path of this weird, like crazed villagers thing that I just I don't really enjoy as far as Resident Evil storylines go. Next off, it is the reason. 5 and 6 are the way they are because people loved the increase in action but that's all fucking Capcom heard and he's like oh you guys love the increase in action okay here's 5 and 6 all action where's the horror I'm blaming 4 for that tell me I'm wrong that's why it's getting stuck in good and not great petty yes but I don't care alien isolation Never played it, not really interested, and a lot of you alien diehards are going to be like, oh, but Depraved is so good. I hear it's good. I really do. But at the same time, I'm not a sci-fi horror fan, and I'm not a fan of constantly having to hide from things. That's 100% of Alien Isolation in a nutshell. Now, I hear it definitely pegs like the Alien franchise down to a T, which is great. But again, I was never a big fan of the Alien franchise to begin with. It is what it is. Walking Dead, didn't even know they had an original PlayStation Walking Dead video game. So we are going to put that under haven't played but interested. Just because I didn't know the original PlayStation had one. Was it the original play? Oh no, that's not the original PlayStation. Oh no, that's that new Walking, Ge Walking Dead game that they were making. Yeah, I was interested in playing that. See, it was next to the PlayStation stuff over here. Parasite Eve. Oh my god, whoever just subbed, thank you. You scared the shit out of me. Holy shit. <laughs> How do I turn that shit off? Uh, anyways. <laughs> Parasite Eve. I'm keeping that in the fucking video. Parasite Eve I've never played. I'm definitely interested. I hear it's a good game. Just never got around to it. Um, The original Clock Tower. This is the very first Clock Tower. Never played it. Not interested. Just because it's point and click, I do enjoy point and click games, but it's so old that I just I, I don't really care to dive into it all that much. Um, that'll come back in a little bit though. Rain. I don't know what game this is. A lot of you guys are gonna be mad. I don't know about what what, what game this is. Um, I just don't. So we're gonna put it under not interested just because I don't know what it is. That is one hundred percent the reason. Black Sight, Area 51. I played a little bit of. It's okay. It's nothing crazy. Alone in the Dark. Absolutely laughable. Another one of those games where the original Alone in the Dark series 
was amazing and scary. And then they put out this shit that wasn't scary, was clunky, the controls were terrible. Um, I can't say anything else about it other than that. I never beat it. I made it about halfway through before I just got tired of playing it, but I bought it for like three bucks. Um, it was one of those games that literally came out, and two months later, it went from 60 to 20 bucks. And it might not even been two months. It might have been a month. Just because nobody was buying it because of how bad it was. Fatal Frame 3, of course, I haven't played, but I'm interested. Um, Alien Colonial Marines. Not only am I not interested, I hear it's probably one of the worst Alien games out there. Clock Tower 3 is going to go under good for me. Clock Tower 3, I watched a buddy of mine play, and him and I were taking turns, passing the controller back and forth. Very good puzzle horror. Could definitely use more of it. Like, seriously, I don't know why Clock Tower hasn't come back or they haven't re-released it or re-put these games out. That game was fucked up. Especially with, like, running from the Executioner was one of the worst. Or the Barber. Fuck them. Anyways, cold. Cold something. Never heard of it. Not really interested. Um, like I said, there were going to be a lot of these games that we're under haven't played in some way, shape, or form. Shellshock 2. Actually, I was supposed to go in not interested. What the fuck are you doing, Depraved? Shellshock 2. Haven't played but interested just because it's a shooter. And I like me some horror shooters. I just realized the original Fear was not on this list. My bad, guys. So the reason why Fear 2 and Fear 3 were down here for me under Haven't Played But Interested, I'm playing through Fear 1 and I own the entire series. So I'm looking forward to playing it. I don't know why that's not on the list. Why are the 2 and 3 on the list but not 1? I don't know. Condemned 2, Bloodshot is another one of those games I haven't played, but I'm interested. Um, again, the Condemned series is just one of those series that, like, I wanted to play through. Never got around to it. Um, oh, I think I... Didn't I put Condemned 1 up here? I'm pretty sure I played through Condemned 1. No, Condemned 1? Never mind. I'm tripping. Next up is Jericho. Jericho is a game I haven't played, but I'm interested. Um, I've seen some videos on it, and it looks freaky as fuck. And I would love to get into 100%. The last few of these is going to seem like I'm rushing. It's not that I'm rushing. I just don't know a lot about the games. Area 51 was a game that just didn't really interest me. Um, haven't played. Not interested. Clock Tower 2 was still very heavy on the point and click. Um, old school. If they re-released it, I would be, like, not re-released it. If they remastered it and completely remade it, I would definitely be interested. But for the most part, just not something I, I, I was really digging to, to, to get into. Last but not least is Alice. Alice is one of those games that I've started playing on my channel and keep intending to go back to, but just have not gotten back around to it. It is a very entertaining game. It is so old, though, I won't say that it's good, just because the gameplay is a little clunky. Um... But a very dark telling of the Alice in Wonderland story, which I really like. I'm going to put it in okay for now. That could change once I go through and beat it. Because um, I own Alice in the second one. I don't remember Return to Dreamland or whatever it is. Because I bought the second one and it came with the first one. Which is why I'm playing through the first one. I didn't even know it came with the first one when I bought it. But once I bought it, it was like, oh, here, you can download the first one. And I was like, oh, sweet, I can play the whole series. Nice. Anyways, guys, this is my tier list. As you can see, as we scroll through, we talked, we covered a lot of video games. Over half I probably haven't played and want to. <laughs> or either want to or don't want to. But, yeah, guys, that is going to do it for this video. If you guys liked the video, be sure to slash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Comment down below what did you think of this T-Series video ranking, or ranking horror video games. Also, be sure to comment down below what tier ranking would you guys like to see me do next. Also, be sure to check the description below for my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and my bit shoot. And as always, I love you guys. Thank you all for watching. I cannot wait to see you depraved people later. Peace.